with public penance.
sweet son. I had an Edward till a Richard killed him. I had a husband till a Richard killed him. I had a husband, my Richard. I had a child, my Rutland. And Margaret killed them both. Thy sons were there when my Prince Ned was stabbed. And now thy babes are thrown away by Richard. From forth the kennel of thy womb hath crept a hellhound that doth hunt us all to death. That dog that had his teeth before his eyes. Cancel his fond of life, dear God, I pray, that I may live and say the dog is dead. Anointed, let me be with deadly venom and die ere men can say, God save the queen. Come, come, poor soul, and wish thyself no harm. No. Why? When he that is my husband now came to me as I prayed by Henry's corpse. I made my wish, be thou for thy accursed. When thou dost wed, let sorrow haunt thy bed, and be thy life more miserable by thee than I am made by my dear Lord's death. Lo, I proved the subject of my own soul's curse. For never yet one hour in his bed did I have sleep that was not wrapped with fear. You are not well, Anne. Consider what you say. I went in terror from his flattering threats, and live in terror now he has my wealth. And besides, he hates me for my father, Warwick, says to my face, you are a turncoat's daughter, one who deserves to weep and stoop and cringe. And as a widower, he can wed more titles and will shortly, no doubt, be rid of me. Oh, to comfort. I see Lady Stanley there, descendant of my uncle Beaufort. Dear Peggy, your Tudor husband fought against my sons. Since his death and my marriage to Lord Stanley, I have been welcomed at the court of Edward. Foreign lands still harbour thy Tudor son. Honoured, my husband is to serve this court. Grateful I am to serve the Lady Anne. Careful you'll be to guide the Queen of England unto the Abbey and her coronation. Good health, attend your birth. <laughs> I loathe the moment when Edward took in thy brood and thee. And now, Elizabeth Woodville, thy son, Richard Gray, led by thy Planned rebellion. <laughs> Their heads forfeit. The traitors died today.
and see what now thou art. Try up not in my woes, but help me curse that bomb spider, that foul punchback toad. My ransom's paid, and I to Louis go. Farewell, York's wife, queen of sad mischance. These English woes will make me smile in France.
Wasser und Wasser. Richtig. Weil es nicht so ist. Edward's two young sons have disappeared. Richard, what's the life of him himself? Richard's evil brings me to a guy of others. Thou art the picture copy of thy grandsire, O Richard. Both he and thy dear father, dead through these wars with the orc, can rest in ease when thou dost. For embarking on revenge, dig two graves. Nay, mother, if thou wilt be a warrior, thou must not grow so passionate in speeches. In this marriage that thou hast planned for me must not take place before I am the king. Why not? I know the Yorks. Don't always claim my Beaufort blood from me is bastardized. That my Tudor blood through father is too lowly. That kingship only came to me through them. So, I'm going to show them I can be king without their help. But, that was side of the Mother, even King Louis needs red blood, not blue. I'll never step behind. Once thou hast the daughter, see the mother lose. Thou wilt reign at court. Woodville will not be there. The Yorks will never gain the upper hand again. The one child of two Clarence shall remain a prisoner. The other may be matched in marriage. We also have support from mother. For now, my Wilford, because it returns to us. Methinks he moves with little thought, as spoiled, entitled Buckingham's off do. All his family died for Lancaster. And he'll conclude, shorter by head. Your new husband, Lord Stanley. Cautious and cunning, but perfect man for us. His private army is always held locked. Whichever side he sees will win, he joins. Once a supporter of the Lancasters and in Ron Warwick, he now serves York. His standing with the House of York keeps him safe. So I can make this curious sort of thing. He knows that your only hope against the York is Margaret's who ranks back to France. She will stay in France. And stop. Now she will. Sensible regimes. And honest ones will make this country strong. I'll be called the bookkeeper of England. But all will dock their hats to me or lose their heads. Long live the king. We must now to leave you. Richard's wife.
Jack Cade, the traitorous rabble rouser said those things. Ma'am, my father's friends were in Cade's rabble. With soldiers returning from the wars in France, keeping the civil peace was hard enough. It did not help to find their inch of land was swallowed up in meadows for sheep to graze in because the wool trade made the wealthy wealthier. That talk could mark thee for the gallows. The world is not the one percent. The world is us. Beat not a furnace for your foes so hot that it doth sin thyself. You need the people. Running from assassins all his life, my son knows well what suffering can be. Do you? I birthed my only child when I was twelve. My body seized and crippled me for more, yet that child I rarely see because of war. But you call our poor, war-torn people ruffians. Your Beaufort ancestor is Katie Swindler. Her street smarts bred a pack of wily bastards. And Owen Tudor, grandsire to thy son, ravished a princess. So I'd say the throne is where the real ruffian ass will sit quite soon. <laughs> what about Margaret of Anjou? Still in the tower, guarded by Alice Chaucer, granddaughter to Geoffrey, who wrote those Canterbury tales. Mm, I know. Mm. Married once to Suffolk, she had to watch Queen Margaret use him as yet another of her many lovers. Louis XI has promised ransom to get Margaret to France, now Henry's slain. What if the princes in the tower are slain? Edward's widow will gladly serve thy son, as with Buckingham, who's turned away from Richard. Tell the woodful woman she can count upon this marriage of the double rose. This is what I want, and I will see it done. The white rose and the red will join in one.